Okay, today's video, as you see, is entitled AC Capacitor Reactants Part 2. And in this video, I'm going to go over conceptually voltage impedance and phasor diagrams for RC circuits. In the following videos, I will go over some work calculation examples. But for this video, this is the circuit diagram that we're going to be talking about. We have an RC circuit, we have a resistor and a capacitor, and an AC voltage source. This is our RC circuit. In this first part of this video, I'm going to go over the phasor diagram for voltage. So we'll talk about voltage phasor diagram. We're going to show you how to determine the voltage of the source and also how to determine the angle, the phase angle between the voltage and the current for RC circuits. Now to review or as an introduction to this video, please remember that if you have a purely resistive circuit, then the voltage and the current are in phase. There is no angle. The angle between the voltage and the current is zero degrees. Now, when we draw the vector representing the current, we typically draw that along the positive y-axis. So that's the vector that represents the current in a purely resistive circuit. Because they're in phase, the voltage and the current, we also draw the vector representing the voltage across the resistor along the positive x-axis because the voltage and the current for resistive circuits, the voltage and the current are in phase. Now that is different, of course, for capacitive circuits. If you have a purely capacitive circuit, then you should remember that the voltage and the current are out of phase, and we have this relatively straightforward device that we can use, ICE, ICE, for capacitive circuits that reminds us that for capacitive circuits, the current leads the voltage. ICE current leads the voltage for capacitive circuits. Now we still draw the vector representing the current along the positive x-axis, but because they're out of phase and they're out of phase by 90 degrees and the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees, then we draw the vector representing the voltage across the capacitor along the negative y-axis like that. And this angle is 90 degrees because they're out of phase, the current and the voltage. The current leads the voltage. Sometimes people say the voltage lags the current, and it's 90 degrees, okay? Now I wanna just point out that we can calculate the voltage if we know the current and the resistance using Ohm's law of V equals I times R, of course. And the same thing for our capacitive circuits. The voltage across the capacitor is I. Now we write down XC, X being the symbol for reactants, and we have a capacitor, so this is for our capacitive reactants. Remember, resistors have resistance. Capacitors have reactants, all right? Now, what we're going to do now in the next slide is we're going to draw the voltage diagram, the voltage phasor diagram, and show you, as I said, how to calculate the voltage of the source and also the angle between the voltage and the current. And since we're going to be drawing the voltage phasor diagram, on the next slide, I'm going to bring my voltage vectors with me. Okay, the current vector would be shown here along the positive x-axis, but I left that off because we're going to be talking about the voltage. So this is our voltage phasor diagram. We have the voltage across the resistor along the x-axis, voltage across the capacitor, because the voltage for the capacitor lags the current. Then we draw the voltage across the capacitor along the negative y-axis like that. Now, in order to get the voltage of the source, I'm going to add these two vectors up. Okay, and uh, because they're vector quantities, I can move one of the vectors as long as I don't change the magnitude in this direction, I can move the vector anywhere I want. So I'm going to slide this vector over. You can see we have a nice right triangle here. And the resultant vector, the sum of these two vectors, is represented by the yellow vector. And that yellow vector represents the voltage of the source. So this is the phasor diagram for the voltage. Now we also have this angle right here, this angle phi. This is called the phase angle. This is the angle by which the current leads the voltage when we have an RC circuit. Remember, the current and the voltage for resistors are in phase, for resistive circuits, for capacitive circuits out of phase by 90 degrees, the voltage lagging the current. Therefore, when we have an RC circuit, the voltage is still going to lag the current, but it's not gonna be at zero or 90, it's gonna be somewhere between zero and 90 degrees. All right, now you can see here, we have a nice right triangle. We, in theory, would probably know what V and R, VR and VC are, and therefore we can calculate VS using the Pythagorean theorem, which tells us that the voltage of the source squared is equal to 
the voltage across the resistor squared plus the voltage across the capacitor squared. And that means take the square root of both sides. You get the voltage of the source is equal to the square root of the voltage R squared plus VC squared. All right, this is the equation that we use to calculate the voltage of the source. This is our phasor diagram. It's kind of a graphical representation of the relationship between those three voltages. All right. Now I want to point out there's one other step we can do to calculate the current. If you know the voltages, you can use these two equations, which we said earlier, V equals I times R for resistors, V equals I X C for the capacitor. I have VR here, so I'm going to substitute IR in. I'm going to substitute IX in here for the voltage across the capacitor. I'm going to square both. I get the voltage of the source is equal to the square root of I squared R squared plus I squared X C squared. I'm going to factor out the I, solve for I. That means the current is equal to the voltage of the source divided by the square root of R squared plus XC squared. Now, we haven't talked about this yet, but maybe you know this is the term that is the impedance of this circuit, which we haven't talked about impedance, but we're going to talk about that in just a moment in this video. Impedance is represented by the symbol Z. So I'm just going to simplify. The current is equal to the voltage of the source, voltage of the source divided by the impedance, okay? So we'll talk about what impedance is in just a moment. I just want to point out here, this voltage source, I didn't specify whether this is the RMS voltage or the peak voltage, but you should know if you use the RMS voltage here, then you get the RMS current. You use the peak voltage here, you get the peak current. So please remember to keep those things straight and separate, whether you're looking for the RMS or the peaks, don't mix them up, all right? Now you can see we did the phasor diagram for the voltage. We, I showed you this equation, the equation used to calculate the voltage of the source. We went on to the current. Now we haven't got the phase angle, so we're going to do the phase angle right now on the next slide, the phase angle phi. This is the angle for an RC circuit, somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees, that the current leads the voltage. Maybe because you're talking about the angle here, it's the angle that the voltage lags the current. The phase angle phi is what that's called. And we have two sides of our triangle, the opposite side and the adjacent side, and that is the tangent. So typically this is done with the tangent. So the arc tangent of phi is equal to the opposite side because tangent is opposite over adjacent using our trig functions. If the opposite side is VC and the adjacent side being VR. And that's how you can calculate that phase angle solving for phi. Okay. All right, so that's the, <coughs> excuse me, that's the voltage phasor diagram with the uh, voltage phasor diagram, the voltage of the source, and the phase angle. So now let's go on and talk about the impedance. Okay, now let's just remind ourselves what the impedance actually is. The impedance describes the total opposition to electron flow in an AC circuit. You see here it says total opposition. It doesn't say total resistance or total reactance because, as you remember, resistors have resistance but no reactance. Capacitors have reactance but no resistance. And we have an RC circuit, so we have to add up in theory, all the resistances and all the reactants, we only have one of each. We get the total opposition, which will give us then the impedance, which we use the symbol Z to designate the impedance. All right, once again, typically for the resistor, because it's in phase with the current, we draw the uh, vector representing the resistance along the positive x-axis for the capacitor because it lags the current, the voltage lags the current, then we draw that, that vector representing the impedance in case we not the impedance, the reactance of that capacitor along the negative y-axis. Now, once again, you see you have two vectors. We want the total opposition, which is the impedance. So we have to add up these two vectors. And once again, we use the head-to-tail method. Add the two vectors. The sum of those two vectors is represented by that vector, x, uh, c, and r. And then we get the hypotenuse, that's z. And that vector represents the impedance of this RC circuit. Okay, and once again, we also have the phase angle, the phase angle for the impedance triangle and the phase angle for the react uh, for the voltage triangle should be the same angle. So you can kind of cut, check your work when you do that. You should get the same angle for both of these. All right, now let's just go through and do that. Pretty straightforward again. It's basically the same process. We have the Pythagorean theorem. Z squared is equal to R squared plus XC squared. Square, take the square root of both sides. Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus XC squared. That's the impedance. This is how we calculate the impedance. Once again, this is the impedance phasor diagram, the phasor diagram for the impedance. This we can call like the impedance, our impedance triangle. 
This is kind of a graphical representation. This is how we calculate the impedance, and then we can get the angle. As I said, should be the same angle you got for the velocity triangle. Arctangent of phi is equal to the opposite over the adjacent for that triangle, xc divided by r. And there you go. That's how you calculate the angle phi. Okay, so I think that is everything we wanted to do. We talked about uh, the voltage in the phasor diagram. We talked about the impedance in the phasor diagram, the phase angle, and did all that for our C circuits. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to, I can I have some links here to some calculations that you can do to see how we do those uh, problems for our C circuits. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up for this video, and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.